Chicken. You gotta love it. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but I do. Anyways, today I'm gonna teach you how to turn this into some of the crispiest, most delicious chicken you've ever eaten. So you probably notice that the chicken is laying flat. This is a technique known as spatchcocking, and it helps to increase the surface area for seasoning and browning. It'll also decrease the cooking time and give us a beautifully cooked, extra crispy chicken by the time we're done. So we're going to start by breaking down the chicken and salting it. I recommend using a carving knife if you have one, but if you don't, just make sure to use something sharp and sturdy enough to cut through the chicken. Ideally, you'll want to do this about 24 hours before you plan to cook the chicken to allow the salt to penetrate all the way through. This will also allow time for the skin to dry out, which will help the chicken to get extra crispy when roasted. To start off, simply find the backbone and make two cuts down the length of the chicken on either side of the spine to remove it. Make sure to save the backbone because it'll help to make a great homemade chicken stock once you collect enough spare chicken parts. I like to keep a bag of leftover chicken parts in my freezer for that exact purpose. It's pretty amazing how much better the flavor and texture is compared to store-bought stock, so I highly recommend making your own. Next, you'll just want to remove any other giblets and gobbledygook that might be left in the chicken. I like to just rinse off the chicken after this step too to clean it up a bit. So now that the chicken's all cleaned up, just make a small cut in the middle near the collar area and press down on both sides to flatten out the bird. Now, transfer the chicken skin side down to a baking tray lined with a wire rack. This will allow the chicken to dry out even more efficiently. We actually want the chicken to dry out somewhat because any excess moisture on the surface of the chicken is going to prevent it from getting crispy. So again, since we want the surface as dry as possible, we're going to pat down the chicken with a paper towel before salting it. Don't worry though, this is only going to dry out the outermost surface, so the inside of the chicken will still end up nice and juicy when it's all said and done. Feel free to salt the chicken pretty liberally since this is the only time we're going to add salt in this recipe. Also, the salt will penetrate relatively deep into the chicken over the course of the next day as it rests. When the bottom is done, flip it over, pat the skin side with a paper towel, and salt that side as well. Now that it's salted, we're just going to place it in the fridge until we're ready to cook it. Also, I like to tuck the wing tips under like so to prevent them from burning as they cook. Now you don't want to wrap it up or anything here because we want to allow the skin to dry out as much as possible. I like to at least cover it with a paper towel though so I don't have to stare at a raw chicken every time I open my fridge. So, now that the preparation is done, I'll see you all tomorrow when it's time to cook the chicken. Alright, so it's been about 24 hours and we're back. So the only thing we're going to do before we cook it is add a bit of pepper. We'll add some more spices later, but we don't want them to burn before the chicken gets cooked all the way through, so we're going to wait a bit before we add them. Now I'm just going to dab the skin side again with a paper towel to remove any liquid that was brought to the surface by the salt. So now let's just head over to the stove and start the cooking process. So before we throw the chicken in the oven, we're going to sear the skin side in a pan to start the browning process. So slowly preheat your pan over medium heat and set the oven to 425 degrees. We want the pan to get pretty hot so that we can brown the chicken a bit and start to develop some nice flavor before it goes into the oven. So once the pan is heated a bit, add some extra virgin olive oil and turn up the heat to medium high. You don't need a lot of oil, just enough to barely coat the bottom of the pan. When the oil is shimmering, place the chicken in the pan, skin side down, and sear for about 7-8 to eight minutes until the skin is a nice golden brown color. It's important to use a heavy bottomed pan like cast iron or stainless steel as I'm using here so that the pan doesn't cool down too much when you add the chicken. You'll probably need at least a 12 inch skillet for this step, which is what I'm using here. Any smaller than that and your chicken may not fit. If you don't have a big enough skillet, it's not the end of the world if you have to skip this step. But anyways, once your chicken is in the pan, again, dab it with a paper towel. Then just add some freshly ground black pepper to this side as well along with a bit of cayenne pepper to add some spice. While that's going, clean off your wire rack and baking tray because we're going to place the chicken back onto it in order to bake it. So, once the skin is golden brown, take your tongs and carefully transfer the chicken back to the wire rack lined baking tray. Be very gentle here because the oil can splatter and burn your hand if you're not careful. And you also don't want to tear the chicken apart as you move it. Now, just place the chicken in the oven and allow it to bake for 35 minutes. To ensure even cooking throughout, you want to place the chicken in leg side first. The legs and thighs take longer to cook than the breasts do, so you want them in the back of the oven since that'll be the hottest part. 
So while that starts cooking, we're going to go ahead and make a simple herb salsa to spread on the chicken before we finish roasting it. Add about a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil to a bowl, along with one teaspoon each of dried or fresh rosemary, thyme, and oregano. Now just stir the sauce until all of the herbs are nicely submerged. I'm using fresh rosemary here and dried thyme and oregano just because that's what I had on hand. Robust herbs like these all hold up quite well when dried, so it won't make a huge difference whether you use fresh or dried herbs. Then squeeze the juice from about half of a lemon. This will brighten up the sauce, and since we'll apply it to the whole surface of the chicken, it'll really add some nice acidity to the dish. Now just mix well to emulsify the sauce. You'll see the sauce turn from clear to a slightly foggier white color, and at this point you know it's well emulsified. So after about 40 minutes, it's time to take the chicken out of the oven to apply the herb salsa. You can see that the chicken has already started to take on some nice browning at this point. So, just apply the herb salsa over the entire surface of the chicken. It's important to wait until this point to apply the salsa so that the herbs don't burn before the chicken gets cooked all the way through. I'm just going to top it with a bit more cayenne pepper as well to give it a little bit of spice. And now we're going to put it back in the oven, leg side first again, for approximately 20 more minutes. Keep in mind, cooking times can vary quite a bit depending on your oven and the size of your chicken, so make sure to keep an eye on the chicken during this period. You can tell that it's done when the juices from the thigh run clear when poked with a toothpick. Or better yet, if you have an instant read thermometer, cook until the thickest part of the breast registers 165 degrees and the thickest part of the thigh registers 175 degrees. After you remove the chicken from the oven, make sure to wait at least 10 minutes before cutting into it. If you cut into it too early, you'll end up losing a lot of the flavorful juices from the chicken. So now we're just going to quickly break down the chicken. Using your carving knife, just find the location where the thighs meet the body of the chicken and cut them off. Then cut the entire body of the chicken in half. Then cut off the wings the same way you did the thighs. You may want to just cut off the wing tips since you're probably not going to eat them. You could also separate the breast from the bones if you so desire, but I'm just going to leave them like this. This has become one of my staple meals since it's so easy to make, but also super delicious and inexpensive. In my experience, you can find a whole chicken like this for less than a dollar per pound most of the time. And to see one of my other favorite affordable chicken recipes, you can click right here. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you over there.